was here. I wasn't even aware we were shooting, but hey, since we're shooting, might as well introduce what we have going on today and this episode of CGM. You know, we're, you know, listen, we're back at it again. And this episode really is one that had to be done, right? We're in country. We've shown so many different facets of Haitian life, Haitian nationals, Haitian Americans who come back, Haitian Canadians who come back. But there is an act, there's a there's a particular set of folks who are impacting and changing the country for the better, but they don't get credit, they don't get highlighted, they don't get any discussion, right? And in fact, there's an ethos of negativity on them. And so this episode, see Genty, we're, we're talking to deportees, and on top of that, we're bringing in a, a brand new organization called Dips Org that has generally changed the game. First time ever is there an organization that's allowing different deportees, not only to network and connect with each other, but help each other, give each other a foundation. I'm sure you guys seen a video uh, in, uh, recently of a deportee who got off the plane and was saying he, he doesn't know anybody here, he doesn't even speak the language, and yet here he is in the country. Dips Org, they saw that, it, 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 it spoke to them, the Org of the founders, and now they're here and they're doing some great stuff. This, I'm, this episode is not about me. I got some great guys, some great women <laughs> as well, who have incredible stories to tell, and we're, and we're just here to, to, to share and, uh, and improve our understanding. So listen, don't change that dial. We got some great coming. My name is McKinson Gene Lewis. How old are you, McKinson? Um, I'm 35 right now. Uh, where in America did you grow up, reside? Um, I grew up in Florida, um, Palm Beach, in Delray. My name is Mike. I'm 53. Uh, I, I, I grew up in um, Brooklyn, New York, and you know, went to school, um, junior high, high school, you know. Marie San Belize, 36 years old, Houston, Texas. What happened to get you deported? Um, you know, a life of crime, you know, drugs, such other things that brought me to Haiti. Uh, you know, like, you know, everybody say, you know, trying to get fast, fast money, jewelry, looking good, you know, didn't know no better, but, you know, destiny. Robbery. How are you adjusting? Um, I adjusted when I first got here. It was a, a real adjustment, but now that I've been here, I'm adjusted well. You know, taking it one day at a time with the Haitian culture, reuniting with my Haitian peoples. Well, you know, when I first came, you know, I was lost. I was lost in the jungle, but you know. I, I put myself together and, and fought on. And you know, as time goes on, I get adjusted to the society. Pretty well. Pretty well. 
one day at a time. What have you enjoyed the most about Haiti? Enjoyed the most about Haiti? Well, Haiti, only thing I could say I enjoy the most being in Haiti is having three kids. That's what I enjoy most of Haiti and also helping the brothers that comes back here that don't have nobody. Just helping another deportee realize that, you know, you got a second chance and life ain't over. You know, that's what I really enjoy. Taking a guy from being scared to him actually having a family and getting back in society, that's what I enjoy. Feeling a level of freedom. What has been the most difficult thing about coming to Haiti? Um, not being able to see your family, my mother, my sisters, certain individuals in America. You know, because the way they do it, they just take you away from your family without no closure or saying goodbye or nothing. So, you know, that was like real difficult. Electricity. Access to water. Not having direct contact with loved ones who I grew up with. I won't be able to go to my mama's funeral. That's a difficult part uh, for me, personally. Any activities related to the community empowerment or entrepreneurship you're involved in? Well, you know, me, myself, I'm, a, I'm, I'm like the president of uh, Dipsorg, and uh, as for business-wise, you know, I have uh, I'm a partnership with an individual that have a, a record company in Haiti, and I have a bus, I drive it. At the moment, you know, I have a little problem in the engine, and you know, but that's not gonna stop the flow. Keeping the fingers crossed, keeping my fingers crossed to get it fixed. I have completed several projects in Haiti. One of the projects I'm focused on right now is getting at least, I said five kids enrolled in school. I am up to 10, so I'm praying that we get that project done soon. As far as empowerment, yeah, of course, I'm involved with DIPS Org. You know, that's an organization for DIPS. Um, it's an acronym that stands for Deportees in Progress Services, and we're an organization, you know, um, and what we here, we just bring awareness to the problem that's going on with the deportees getting sent back, who don't have no families, who don't have no individuals to help them reintegrate. So, you know, that's what I've been involved with as far as empowerment and as far as in the community, you know, because you got to lead by example. What's the biggest misconception of deportees? The biggest uh, misconception of deportees is that all deportees are bad people or that they don't deserve a second chance or that we're not a part of Haiti. Number one thing is we are still origin of Haiti. So even though we are deport returned back to our country, this is naturally our country and you know I really dislike when if when you say you are a deportee you have to walk with your head down or there is a misconception that come with you as if you are a bad person because not all deportees I speak for myself and several others we want to see Haiti do better this is our second chance and we are at home it's what better opportunity to go ahead and do the best that you can and actually dedicate yourself to the community and using what you learn in other countries to make your country better. The biggest misconception of a deportee is that the deportee don't want to change his life. Um, the deportee just want to continue doing negative and that it's a conception that they don't want to necessarily give the deportee a chance but to get to know him for outside of what they heard about him, actually get to know the person. So there's a lot of misconceptions, but that's one of them. As soon as they see you, they look, you, they look at you different, which we're not. We're the same people. Um, I, I 
always thought I was going to stay young. Sometimes I'd be like, if I have the mentality that I have now, that 30 years back, there's some mistake I wouldn't, be made, I wouldn't make, you know. What's your involvement in Dips Org specifically? My involvement in Dips Org, you know, it's so many different involvements because Dips Org is like a way of life, a family, almost, um, it's almost like a way of living. But my involvement right now, I am the mediator. Once the dip actually comes off the plane, I'm the one he sees. I make a phone call with, to his family, alert, alert them, let them know that he's in Haiti, and help him just get through those first initial hardships of being deported. You know, that's my involvement. I goes, I goes around, look for individuals that, that believe in, in us to see they could fund a certain part of, 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 of the organization. And also, we have uh, individuals that comes every month. Last month, seven came, six, six male, one female. And basically, we wait, uh, this week we should be bringing them kids. They should be getting released out of quarantine. And you know, we should be, we'll be having footage on that to show, to see the progress of Dipso. My name is Meliana. So my story is about seven years ago, I landed in Haiti, came on a missions trip. Um, I was actually a chaperone for my daughter who was coming um, on a missions trip at the time. Ended up coming back six months later and basically just traveled Haiti and realized that this is where I wanted to be and I just felt the pull, you know, to come here and pretty much just establish myself and I've been here for seven years and I consider Haiti my home. So not only do I work here, but this is my home. So for the past two years, I have been working as a host at an Airbnb called La Caille Pose. And basically, I host any Americans, Haitians, Haitian locals, um, Haitian Americans, just why that come into the country for medical purposes, um, visiting teams, and tourists. So I'm the person that takes care of you when you come in. I make sure you have all your meals, transportation, and that your uh, stay in Haiti is comfortable. It's org. Why? Why this org? So, um, mainly because most of the people that I know here that are my friends who have become my family are dips, deportees, and I would pretty much say that they've been my lifeline while living in Haiti. I grew to understand the country that I love so much through their eyes. And um, they've just been a source of um, comfort for me here. And I really feel as though that these, um, some of these guys and ladies have amazing stories. Um, they have amazing talent. And I just feel as though that I want to be that bridge um, for them. I want to be able to fight for them, um, fight for their stories, fight for them to be able to um, have their voices heard. Where do, you see, where do you see Dips Org being in the next five years? Where, where would you like Dips Org to be? Where would I like Dips Org to be? I have a vision of just being able to help the people that come into the country, um, just to be able to provide a service, um, just to be able to provide um, some sort of stability for them, to let them know that there is a hope, that there is a future after deportation, and that it's not the end. So right now we are on Facebook. Um, our Facebook page is Dips Org, capital D I P S, capital O R G. It's one word. So you can go on and like and share our page. Um, so right now our Cash App is uh, Dips Org. You know the dollar sign and then Dips Org. That's our Cash App. Um, I also have posted our Venmo link and PayPal link on our Dips Org page, so you can find that there. We are also on Instagram. Uh, Dips Org 2020 for Instagram, so go follow us on there. And we are in the process of making a website at the moment, so we are just starting out. <laughs> okay, uh, arrived in Haiti June the 4th, and a few months after June the 4th, I decided, you know, there needed to be some community work done. With that thought, I started a YouTube channel, which is Life in Haiti. And I have completed several projects. The latest project 
that I am working on is getting, my goal was five kids enrolled in school. I have a list of 10 and I hope to get more enrolled in school. If you would like to get in contact with me and learn more and see more of what I have been doing in Haiti, you can please check me out on YouTube, Life in Haiti, which is in one word. You should see my face. Um, I also have Life in Haiti, Life in Haiti Facebook. I have Life in Haiti underscore Instagram. And you can also email me to at lifeinhaiti at gmail.com.